All right, so we're gonna talk about breast cancer reconstruction. This is what I did mainly uh, for almost two decades it was cancer reconstruction, predominantly breast because that's the most prevalent form of cancer in the United States. One in eight women will get you know, breast cancer. And so uh, my niche was to take their own tissue, think of like the tummy tuck tissue. So the tissue below the belly button all the way out to the hip bone and down towards the groin area, pubic area, that kind of swath of tissue you could take out, but you could take it out and leave it attached to the blood vessels. The blood vessels are found in the six pack muscle as they run down the abdomen. So why is that important? Well, you wanna preserve the muscle and the nerves that go to those muscles so that the abdominal wall will work. So you could do a crunch, a sit up, whatever you want. Think of it like that, maintain the core strength. And so we know that if you preserve even one of those muscles completely, there's much better recovery. There are studies uh, are done uh, throughout the world about that. And that was really what got me interested in um, how to do the uh, perforator flap is what that's called. It's called the deep inferior epigastric artery perforator flap. And basically it's just following the anatomy, which was always, uh, you know, <laughs> just the most incredibly interesting thing to me as a surgeon in training was how you could follow the anatomy and perform these flap reconstructions for tumor, uh, infection, traumatic area of injury all over the body. And so when I was uh, finishing my plastic surgery training, this type of reconstruction was really starting to get elevated around the United States and around the world. So I was super interested in and wanted to do more and more reconstruction with this type of, of technique. And when I uh, started academic practice, I did hundreds of uh, lower leg reconstructions with what's called the uh, anterolateral thigh perforator free flap. And I had learned that in my fellowship training in 2004-5 with a, a now a surgeon who's deceased, Dr. Kayvon Kiabani, um, great surgeon. And uh, I was allowed to do more and more uh, free flap breast reconstruction because of my mentor, Dr. Uh, Bill Zamboni, and my uh, mentor in surgical training, uh, plastic surgical training was uh, Dr. Coleman. So those, uh, they, I owe them you know, a huge debt of gratitude because they allowed me to express myself and learn those techniques and then I went on and I taught those techniques to residents and, and fellows and um, the most uh, complicated reconstructions you could come up with from our surgical oncologist that I worked with, orthopedic surgical oncologist doing sarcoma care, uh, very difficult cases, had neck cancer cases where you had to reconstruct the jawbone using the lower leg bone with or without skin, and then throat cancer cases where you'd use the ALT flap and make a tube. Um, that's still, uh, well, that was my preferred technique. I really enjoyed uh, reconstruction with that flap. And then of course, doing DIEP, free flap breast reconstruction, which when I transitioned out of academic practice and came to Austin, Texas in 2012, that was what we did predominantly uh, was DIEP, free flap breast reconstruction. I still did all the sarcomas in Austin, and I still did, uh, in conjunction with other surgeons, the majority of the head and neck reconstruction um, in Austin. And so really, um, the, the breast cancer reconstruction led to all the explant surgery I did. Um, patients who had developed problems with their breast implant reconstruction uh, they could be capsular contracture, they could be infection, they could be uh, skin problems, um, they could have went on and had radiation injury. Um, they may have what's called an animation deformity where uh, the implants, of course, would have been an animation deformity. The cause is it's behind the muscle and when they, they move their torso or they're working out, um, it creates an abnormal appearance that bothered them. So there are a host of reasons why people would get referred to me with an implant-based reconstruction that then I would convert to an autologous or their own tissue reconstruction. And my preferred technique was the DIP perforator uh, flap or the deep 
deep inferior epigastric artery perforator flap. And the, the outcomes um, provided everything went with well with the, the microsurgical aspects of it, which we had a success rate over 95%. And I had, you know, uh, really honed in on that flap reconstruction as well as other things to help cancer patients like lymphatic reconstruction. I was the first to do that in Austin, Texas. And um, now it's becoming more common to do lymphatic reconstruction, but we had uh, been advancing that um, really since uh, 2000, um, probably 15, 16, after going to a meeting in uh, Taiwan. And uh, those were, you know, extremely rewarding cases. Um, but going back to breast cancer reconstruction, you know, I get asked routinely now, can we take down a reconstruction and perform an aesthetic flat closure for somebody with uh, chronic inflammation, breast implant uh, capsular contracture, breast implant uh, illness symptoms. And so now I don't do microsurgery anymore, so don't uh, ring up the office uh, desiring a flat-based reconstruction. There are plenty of people around the country doing that. Um, you wanna have uh, somebody who's done uh, uh, several hundred, if not thousand, free flat breast reconstructions. Don't go to anybody who hasn't, that's not uh, advisable. And then, um, you know, for us, I get asked, can we do fat transfers, of course. I mean, I did hundreds of fat transfers every year for breast cancer patients from the time I started in 0405 until the time I stopped doing reconstruction in 2019. Um, we would do 100, 150 a year. And now, obviously, I have people fly from all over the United States, Europe, Asia to come here and get explants and have fat transfers at the same time. Um, for cancer patients, it's just different. Uh, we have to be uh, uh, just looking at all the factors that they're going through. I recently had a, a consultation with somebody from uh, the Western United States who had a very complicated cancer case that um, definitely uh, is not uh, for every provider to take care of. So with, with cancer, there are obviously you know, uh, special circumstances that we take into consideration when providing surgical treatment plans for them but we definitely provide consultations and guidance. Uh, my SHARP process uh, can be used by any of those patients who are trying to get prepared for or just lower inflammation prior to surgery and after surgery. It's a, uh, a very, very good program. Um, so that is uh, one of the ways that we interact with our, our breast cancer patients. And uh, I think that will grow more and more as patients just resolve themselves to either not wanting the reconstruction or providing themselves with a fat transfer for uh, contour and um, uh, adding volume, but obviously it'll be a smaller amount of volume.